Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. Today we are doing another comparison video of a hoo-hoo versus a hoo-hoo. Yeah. And guys, I have read the comments, and from what I understand, I am pronouncing a hoo-hoo wrong. I don't know what to tell you. I say a hoo-hoo, and I have been told it's supposed to be a hoo or hoo-hoo, and honestly, I, it's a hoo-hoo to me. So I've also looked at tons of other artists' videos on these markers, and a hoo-hoo generally seems to be the uh, accepted way to say it. Regardless, I don't think it's that big of a deal. <laughs> So just uh, say it however you want. So the reason we are checking out the same brand of markers is because these are the different types of markers. We've got the brush marker here with its brush nib and chisel nib like so. Standard chisel nib, standard brush nib, and the original with the chisel nib and the bullet nib. And so we're not looking for differences in ink quality or anything like that, but we are looking at the differences of these two markers as far as how they work in terms of one being the brush nib and the other being the bullet and chisel tip nib. Let's go ahead and test out blending first. All right, so basically I'm going to be moving from a light yellow green to a darker green to an almost very vibrant emerald green. And the cool thing about this is the colors are exactly the same. So color picking was really easy this time around. But let's see how blending is for the brush nib and the chisel nib. So I'm gonna start with my hoo hoo brush and I'm doing a feathering kind of motion. And there we go. So that's the brush side. Let's try that same exact thing with the chisel nibs on the originals. And I never use the bullet nib to blend. First, because it just doesn't really work as well. And also because the chisel nib has tons of more ink. And I feel like the transition is slightly rougher on the original side. So that's the benefits of having the brush nib is that your blends end up coming out just a little bit more seamless and just nice. Whereas we can pretty much see the transition lines kind of happening like in the middle, but I think they still did a good job. So let's move on to what we are coloring today. This is my next planetary girl and I never reveal which planet it is until the very end. That way you guys can go ahead and guess in the comments. I'm also super excited to be announcing that I'm finally providing you guys downloads of my liner so that you guys can download and print it out and color with me. And so if you're interested in the line art, I have a link in the description below that will take you to my website. And there you can find this line art and all my previous ones that I've done before. Also, this is a major difference. I can post my caps on the brush side, which is super convenient. And definitely the cool thing about doing the same brand of marker for both sides is that the piece comes out seamless as far as colors go. Although funny enough, when I was color matching, some of the colors just didn't match. And for the life of me, I couldn't figure that out. <laughs> like there was a blue that I really wanted to use. And I have the 120 set of the originals, so I don't know why I couldn't find it, unless I misplaced it. I don't know, that's very likely a possibility. And like, I did find a shade similar, but you could tell it was just slightly different by being just a bit brighter. And I was like, no, I don't wanna use a color that is at all different. Like I really wanted to aim for this piece to be as seamless as possible. And so I'm not really sure what causes that. I mean, either I lost the actual marker on the original 120 set, or it's possible that there are slight differences in color when the markers are being manufactured. I mean, that's a possibility, but I just found that interesting. Okay, so skin is done and yep, pretty much seamless as I figured it would be since these colors were exactly the same. And so I'm gonna move on to eyes. And if you notice, she has a bit of a sad kind of expression. And I definitely did that on purpose. because so I feel like it represented a bit of what this planet is because it's in a way kind of concern or perhaps its current state is concerning. And I feel like that whole conversation just kind of gave it away as far as which planet this could be. And I'm not gonna delve too much into why it would be concerning because I'm not here to be political, so. Yeah. <laughs> 
And so the hair is going to be blue. She's kind of got her hair parted to the side. So the separation line is a bit crooked. <laughs> and one thing I definitely want to mention is the price difference of these two sets. So Uhuhu has only released the 48 count in their brush nib style. And the cost of that is $34.99. And that averages out to about 74 cents per marker-ish. And then on the original set, I have the 120 count, and the 120 count is $64.99, which is more expensive, but per marker, it's cheaper. So that comes out to about 55 cents per marker, which honestly, I don't feel makes a huge difference between the two. And I think I saw like on amazon.com that they have the 40 count of the originals for like $16.99, which is really good. So I definitely feel like if you've never tried a hoo-hoo out and want to, but don't want to spend a ton of money, I would definitely check out that 40 count pack just to see how you like that one first and then move on to anything else like the brush marker pack for when you want to work with them more. Okay, I may have gone a little overboard with this hairstyle, as I'm sure you all can see, but I really wanted to capture this planet's overall look because the hair is supposed to represent a very specific characteristic or aspect of this planet. And that was basically the biggest hint I could have ever given you all. So <laughs> I expect everyone to guess right in the comments. And I'm just gonna do the other side with the brush nib really quick to give myself a bit of a break from using the chisel nib. Because it's so stiff, it's harder to color in certain areas especially when you're dealing with these like really tight bends around here, it gets hard when you're using the chisel nib. So that's definitely one of the differences also. The brush nib with its flexibility, it just becomes easier to color in certain areas, especially when it comes to hair. Since my style of hair is very flowy and crazy, coloring it in is sometimes kind of stressful, especially when the nibs are stiff. So this is definitely one of those moments where the brush nib is excellent. I feel like the only downside to the brush nib though at the moment is the color selection. It's just limited and that's not really completely fair to say about them because obviously the colors will come out eventually. <laughs> and so with the Uhuhu originals there's 120 of them. That's the biggest pack you can get. So I'm assuming with the brush nibs it'll be the same thing. I think there's a 72 pack coming out next for the Ahuhu brush markers. There's been no confirmation as of this video, so I'm not 100% sure, but I definitely can't wait to get my hands on more colors of these brush marker ones. Okay, bullet nib side is done with the hair. Let's move on to brush marker side. So apparently one cool thing that I learned is that the nibs on the brush markers are flippable. <laughs> I don't know, someone commented on one of my previous videos on the Yahoohoo brush markers stating that apparently you can pull the brush nib out and flip it around. I have not tried it. Apparently uh, Coloring Bliss is a channel that discovered it. I've not checked that channel out, but I don't know. Let's try that out, actually. I'm gonna go ahead and pick out this lighter color because I don't want to get my hands too stained with the ink. And I'm gonna pull the nib out. Okay. Huh, look at that, it is. How convenient. And I guess I can just push it back in and use the other side. Let me see. Okay, I'm gonna color her lips really quick. Look at that. Oops, I colored both sides of her lips with the brush marker. <laughs> Oh well, it doesn't matter. It's the same brand, so. That's actually really cool. So, okay, well then that brings me to my next point. I'm gonna go back to the hair really quick. Is that the brush marker nibs do fray after a while. And I feel like that was kind of expected. Um, you know, these markers are on the very, very, very affordable end. <laughs> when it comes to brush markers. So I believe their nibs are made of felt, which does tend to break down after a while of continuous use. It's hard to gauge how much use. I I mean, I feel like I've been using my Hoo Hoo brush markers quite a lot and I'm noticing the fraying on markers that I use, on colors that I use a lot. But the fact that you can 
pull the nib out and just flip it around when your older nib gets all worn down is really cool because that pretty much then just gives you an all new nib and gives you twice the life of the marker in my opinion, as far as nibs go. I mean, I'm not entirely too sure what a hoo hoo has planned in the future, but I think it would be pretty awesome if they started selling like replacement nibs and stuff. As far as fraying though, I haven't had any issues with my originals. I mean, my chisel nibs have never really frayed on me. And of course the bullet nibs are quite tiny and compact and stiff that they don't really fray at all either. Perhaps maybe if I use them like really hard, they would. I know in my, uh, how many pages does an Uhuhu brush marker fill? I used the chisel side like so dang hard that it did flatten out. But I mean, that's not really an accurate representation of the chisel nib because I was almost out of ink and I was pressing super, super hard, so. Her clothing is kind of similar to the clothing that I gave Mars, which is one of my other comparison videos. I think Mars is my Arctix versus Uhuhu. And I definitely tried to do that similarity on purpose because Mars and this planet, while I wouldn't say they have a lot in common, they do share some similarities. And I figured that connection would be best achieved with similar like clothing styles. I don't know, maybe I'll ship them together too. <laughs> so since she has quite a lot of color to her already, I'm gonna probably do a black sort of background just to kind of make her like kind of pop out even brighter, I guess you could say. So I'm just gonna take straight black, kind of make like black clouds. Okay, yeah, I really like this and I definitely feel it really pops the color even more. All right, let's do the chisel nib side, I guess you could say. And with such a dark opaque color, you really gotta be careful with these smaller areas. Ooh, it's hard to color in, especially when the bullet nib, it's small, but it's not that small. <gasps> I'm debating on whether to leave this upper piece or upper part white. I don't know. Hmm. I think I might just color it in black too. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. And so that's that. As I'm sure you've probably guessed, this is planet Earth. So I wanted to do the hair like super wavy to mimic like rivers and stuff like that. And of course, uh, blue and green are the usual colors that go together when, when we see the planet. So I made her skin green. And then I just chose uh, colors that would best suit the rest of the color scheme of green and blue. So purple and orange and yeah. So if you enjoyed this video, maybe comment, like, and subscribe. And also let me know what you think about both sides. Who do you think won? The brush markers or the bullet nib originals? All right guys, I'll see you next time. Bye!